Socks may sound boring, but they are one of the most important pieces of exercise gear you can own. Be sure to choose socks with mid-weight padding over the toes and under the ball and heel to protect the foot from shear and impact forces, which can lead to painful blisters. Don't forget the top of the foot, as a little padding will go a long way in protecting against uncomfortable lace pressure. Socks containing a combination of acrylic or polyester, as well as stretch nylon and spandex around the arch, will wick away sweat, keeping your feet cool and dry and will also prevent bunching up around the arch for extended wear and comfort. Shoes. We all buy them. We all wear them. And nearly one out of every four of us requires a specialized shoe due to the physical structure of our foot. But how many of us really pay attention to the shoes we buy, other than how they look? Your podiatrist can evaluate your current shoes for wear patterns, which may suggest a biomechanical imbalance. Ultimately, what you wear should depend on your foot type and training needs. Today, shoes have features which are designed for different foot types. For instance, motion control shoes are the most rigid, durable, and control-oriented shoes that limit overpronation. Buy these shoes if you overpronate, if you wear orthotics and want a stable shoe, or if you have flat feet. Stability shoes provide a good blend of cushioning, support, and durability. Buy these shoes if you need support and good durability, but don't have any severe pronation or supination. Cushioned shoes have the most cushioning with the least support. If you underpronate, have a high arch, and don't need any extra support, buy these shoes. If you are participating in a fast-paced race or training program, choose a lightweight training shoe, as long as you have no motion control problems. If you run off-road or in inclement weather, and need more traction and durability, choose a trail shoe with more durable uppers and a thicker sole. Exercising in worn-out shoes or shoes not intended for the sport, such as wearing running shoes to play tennis, can cause or contribute to injuries. So always use your shoes for their intended sport and have an extra pair on hand and alternate shoes when possible to give them time to dry out between exercise sessions. When buying new shoes, Shop late in the day because your feet swell during the day. Always measure your foot while standing and be sure to try on shoes with the socks you normally wear. Allow a thumbnail's width between the shoe and your big toe and if your feet are different sizes, buy for the larger size. Choose shoes that are comfortable immediately. If they hurt in the store, don't buy them as a break-in period is not likely to make a big enough difference. And finally, Consider an evaluation by a podiatrist to learn your foot type so your shoe is appropriate for you and your particular activity. During this evaluation, your doctor may suggest an orthotic device to help stabilize and protect the foot, to prevent or correct a biomechanical problem, and to aid in performance of certain functions. There are a large variety of devices available depending on the diagnosis and your individual needs. Although custom orthoses are considerably more expensive than off-the-shelf devices, in general they last much longer and provide more support and correction. In some cases, however, an over-the-counter device can be just as effective, particularly when combined with a stretching and exercise program. For a custom application, your podiatrist will create a mold of the foot from plaster, fiberglass sock, or foam box. The mold will be sent to an orthotics manufacturer with a prescription to make your custom foot orthotic. Because orthotic design can vary significantly depending on foot type or injury, this prescription will tell the lab exactly what features of the orthotic are needed to correct your specific foot deformity or injury being treated. Once you have been fitted with your orthotic, you should allow a break-in period to enable your feet to properly adjust. Wear your orthotics one to two hours the first day, and then for each subsequent day, you may increase your wear time by an additional one to two hours until you are comfortable wearing your orthotics full time. This should take about two weeks. During this break-in period, you should not wear your orthotics to participate in any training or sports-related activities. Once you are wearing your orthotics full time, introduce them to your sporting activity and allow for another break-in period. For example, if you typically run four miles, only run one to two miles the first time out in your orthotics, and then gradually increase your mileage. 
You should break in your new orthotics in one pair of shoes or sneakers until you are comfortable wearing them on a full-time basis. Always wear your orthotics with socks or stockings to avoid blistering. During the break-in period, inspect both feet for new red marks, blisters, or sores as soon as you remove your shoes and socks. Any pink or mild red areas should disappear within 10 to 15 minutes. If you notice any persistent pressure areas or sores, discontinue use immediately and consult your podiatrist. Your orthotic should not be worn with any shoe which is deemed worn out. Check for excessive wear on the heel, wedging on one side, increased bendiness of the middle arch of the shoe, or any holes within the shoe lining. Be sure to take your orthotics with you to pick out shoes. It is important that your feet and the orthotics fit correctly in the new shoes for optimal comfort and support.